Modern roller coasters get more and more extreme every year, and many people fear roller coasters and will not ride them. In this video, I'm going to cover all the safety systems in place to make sure you don't need to worry about your next ride. Safety begins at the design and construction phase. Once complete, the train is pulled slowly through the entire track with a structure attached, either wooden or metal, which is known as the clearance envelope. This is designed to ensure that riders will not come into contact with any supports or any theming elements along the ride. This wasn't always the case though. In fact, on older wooden coasters, they didn't do any of this and you will regularly see signs that say keep your hands and legs inside the ride. There are some rare cases where after construction modifications are needed. In fact, one well-known case is Millennium Force where one of the supports had to have a little notch cut out of it to stop people putting their arms out and hitting into it. Coasters are broken up into what is known as block sections. Each section can typically only contain one train at a time and a block in front must be clear before the next train proceeds. Each block section will have a mechanism to completely bring a train to a halt. This can either be a lift system, an elevator or a brake. In 1959, the Matterhorn at Disneyland was the first ride to contain a computerised block-based system where it monitored the position of every single train and would bring a train to halt if the next section was not empty. Typically, block brakes are located slightly higher up. This ensures that if the train is brought to a complete halt and then it has to restart the course, it has a small decline to allow gravity to get around the rest of the track. Also, these block sections typically have catwalk and stairs to ensure that in the case of an emergency, if they cannot clear the block section in front, they can get to guests to evacuate the ride safely. Block sections are also a great way to ensure that you keep queues to minimum. The more block sections you have, the more trains you can have, the more trains you have, the more people can get on the ride. Less waiting in queues. The most obvious part of a roller coaster safety is the restraint mechanism. Now that varies, it can be a simple seatbelt, it can be a lap bar, it can be an over shoulder restraint. It may come as a surprise nowadays, but actually in the early days of roller coasters there was no restraints at all. They weren't extreme enough and I would say people were more sensible back in those days. Actually stay seated, did not do anything stupid. So early roller coasters, the wooden ones that didn't go particularly fast and certainly didn't go upside down, you literally just sat on a bench with no restraints. In fact, Blackpool Pleasure Beach Nickelodeon Streak up until 2006 was one of these rides that did not have any restraints on it. It does now have uh, individual lap bars, but it didn't up until 15 years ago. As rides developed and got more and more extreme, and particularly when they started to invert, over-shoulder restraints became more of a common mechanism. Nowadays they are becoming less used because they are bulky, they are uncomfortable, they're notorious for headbanging on older rides. The Comas SLCs usually are not the most comfortable things. Uh, so nowadays we are moving more and more towards lap bar restraints, which allow a lot more freedom, upper body freedom. You can move around, wave your hands in the air, do all sorts of crazy stuff. And it just gives a more freeing, more extreme experience. In terms of how these restraints work, there are two common systems. For the over-shoulder restraints, you will typically have a ratchet system and you can usually tell this because you hear the clacking as you pull the restraint down and it will go to one of a number of fixed positions. This can often lead to either having a small gap where you may feel a little bit uncomfortable or pushing it to the next notch and then you're pinned to the seat. Nowadays, rise are starting to use more and more a hydraulic system. This allows infinite adjustment where the rider can get the restraint to where they want it to be and as long as it's past the minimum acceptable level the system will accept that and they will lock the restraint in place. In both cases whether it's a ratchet system which uses pins to lock into place or the new hydraulic system they typically have redundancy so there will be a spare set of pins or a spare set of hydraulic pumps so that in the unlikely event that one fails there is a backup system. It's also common on top of these systems to have a seatbelt. This isn't required per se, the systems are perfectly secure without them. And actually, again going back to Blackpool Pleasure Beach, Icon, when it first launched for the first two or three years, did not have any seatbelts, it was purely a lap bar restraint. Uh, and it now does contain a seatbelt. There are many other rides of this variant with the same trains that do not. Um, there are a few reasons that these uh, seatbelts are added. One is a visual cue to the ride operators that it is you know, in place, especially if you've got a larger guest that shows that it has closed enough. Uh, it's also perceived safety by the general public um, and potentially for insurance purposes as well. It is a third redundancy system. 
as well as all the modern technology that now exists within roller coasters, there is also safety in numbers from a human perspective. Typically nowadays you will see ride operators in most if not all corners of the train and prior to dispatch you'll see them give a thumbs up to the ride operator. In addition to that, many rides now are starting to have additional controls in those corners so the ride operators have to press a button to release the train and only when all those operators have pressed the button in addition to the ride operator in the cab will the train actually be released. It may come as a surprise to many people that roller coasters, unlike your family car, bicycle, train, etc., don't actually have brakes on the roller coaster itself. The brakes exist on the track in key locations. One of them obviously is the station where the train has to come to a complete halt to both load and unload guests. But in addition, as mentioned earlier, each block section has a braking mechanism. The brakes on a roller coaster most commonly are physical brakes which will apply pressure to a fin located underneath the train but many modern trains now have a magnetic braking system and actually the way these work if you look at something like Red Force in Ferrari Land it uses a magnetic braking system at the end and the way that works is actually the faster you hit the brakes the more aggressive the brakes are because it's all about opposing polarity of magnets. One other type of brakes that you will find on roller coasters are what are called trim brakes and these are designed to regulate the speed of the train much to the disgust of many enthusiasts who think they spoil the experience but it isn't there to ensure that the train does not travel above a certain speed so we've now discussed various mechanisms to make sure that you, the rider, are secure within the vehicle. We've mentioned that there is a braking system to ensure that it can come to a halt if required. You've got to make sure that the train itself stays on the track. Obviously to do so, this is done using the wheels. Now in the early days, you only had a single set of wheels, much like your car, which just went along the track. This was fairly straightforward, roller coasters weren't particularly advanced or thrilling. But as they got more and more extreme and they started to kind of accelerate far faster, they needed some mechanism to ensure that the trains didn't jump off the track. To do so, an additional set of wheels were put on the underside of the track, sort of pinning the track between the train's wheels. These were known as upstop wheels, as the name suggests, stops the train from going up. Um, and nowadays, we have even a third set of wheels, typically on the outside of the track, sometimes on the inside, but effectively you are pinned completely to this track so that you can't go sideways, you can't go up, you can't go down. You are on that track for the duration. One of the big things about this coaster is it's one of the first coasters in Europe to have upstop wheels. What that basically means is that you've got, when you watch horror films where roller coasters come flying off the track, it's so unlikely in reality because the train is effectively actually clamped onto the track. You've got wheels on the top, which you main running wheels, you've got guide wheels that go on the inside, and underneath you've got what are called upstop wheels. That, and what that allows the coaster to do is much steeper drops and turns. For roller coasters that have a lift hill, you will always find an anti-rollback device. The name, as it suggests, prevents the train from going back down the hill. It's designed to only go up the hill, and usually you'll hear that traditional clack, 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 clack noise. That one example is the big one at Blackpool Pleasure Beach, which is a very iconic sound. This is effectively a set of teeth that are in the track, uh, and then there is a pin underneath the train that clicks into place as it goes up, and obviously if for any reason the train stops rising, it prevents it from rolling back. You will also find these on some older wooden coasters to prevent the train from valleying. If a train fails to get to the top of the hill and it did come back down and rest at the bottom, or valley as it's known in the industry, it would be extremely difficult to get that train back up. They tend to be extremely heavy. So to make sure that doesn't happen, anti-rollback exists on those hills as well to catch the train close to the top and then it can just be pushed over and continue around the rest of the track. Most roller coasters used to traditionally employ a lift hill to get them up to a certain height and then rely upon gravity to do the rest. More and more nowadays, roller coasters use a launch mechanism and there are three different launch mechanisms in place. The older version is the hydraulic system, which is a physical launch and still exists in some cases, but it is being phased out for safety concerns. Nowadays, the launch systems tend to be magnetic. There are two magnetic systems in operation. You have LIMs and LSMs. Without getting too technical into how these work, LIMs tend to be less complex and can produce a higher peak force. 
LSMs are way more efficient, smaller and use less power. It's obviously important that as well as all these systems that are in place, that the ride and the track is regularly maintained. To do this, typically you will have an inspection. Depending on where you are around the world, the frequency of this will vary, but it's not uncommon to have a daily walk off the track first thing before the park opens to the public, just to make sure that everything is in place, nothing has become loose, nothing has fallen off, there's no cracks, nothing of any concern, and the trains are regularly inspected as well. Think of the guys each morning, doesn't matter what the weather is, they have to walk the entire track and they're doing inspections to check that you want to make sure that all the, um, the rails are in alignment, there's no damage, there's no nails not where they should be, there's no rot or broken or support or whatever. All of that happens before the park opens. The final thing to go on top of that is that typically rides will have an annual maintenance routine where the trains are removed from the track completely, they are disassembled, every element is checked, new parts are put on where required, the train is rebuilt, relocated back onto the track, ready for the next season. And depending on the park, many parks, where I live in the UK at least, uh, close in the winter season, so they've got four or five months where they typically will do all of the maintenance on all the rides at once. You obviously have all year round parks, such as Disney, Efteling, etc. For those, they try and stagger their maintenance schedules so that they have most rides operating at any given time. And obviously they want to try and have all the rides operating during the peak season in the summer. In addition, when the inspection is carried out and all the bolts are replaced, wax is placed on every single bolt to indicate if it has moved. So the next time you are on a ride, you will see these coloured lines on all the bolts and it allows for a visual inspection to make sure nothing has come loose. Hopefully this video has given you an insight into just how many safety systems there are in modern roller coasters and if you are one of those people who is a little bit unsure about getting on roller coasters, I really do hope that you have found this useful and you are a little more confident now in all the systems that are there for your safety and your enjoyment so that all you do is get on, enjoy that ride, come off with a massive smile on your face. Anyway, if you've enjoyed this, give it a like, share it with a friend. I've been Chris, you've been watching Coaster Dad, see you in the next one. Adios.